they have a much larger vocabulary of like, um, what is it, or probably like 10,000? Is, is that about right, maybe? Yeah. You don't know? Okay, so that's, that's close, okay. Um, so, so maybe a speaking vocabulary is 10,000, but there is, there is, the number of words in the dictionary is probably closer to a million or 10 million, I guess. I, I could be wrong. Okay. okay, well, no one's here to correct me, so, so I'll, well, let's assume that's approximately correct. Um, probably depends if it's a bridge or not a bridge, right? So the thing is, there are some very obscure words that, you know, are hardly ever used. Um, but, but the thing about a heavy tail distribution, so if you look at, if you plotted, so if you look at this as the rank, and this was equal to, to i, right? this was this value i here, and this is the fraction, the fraction of words that occur at this rank or less, um, in i or less. So then if I look at one here, I started at, um, I start here at 7%, but this was the fraction of words in rank i. So I started at 7%, at 2, I dropped down to 3.5%, at 3, I, to 2.8%, but then at 4, I didn't drop down that much. And what happens is that it kind of gets really flat, but it doesn't, it doesn't go all the way to zero here. Um, right, so where, as opposed to if I had done a, a Gaussian distribution or exponential, it, it would have probably started higher and then dropped very, very quickly down to something very close to zero. So this one is more um, um, exponential tail, and this one is going to be heavy tail. So with the exponential tail, if you take the top maybe 10% of the data, you probably capture um, maybe you probably capture something like 90, um, like 99% of the of the population, right? Um, so so maybe um, so, so maybe with words and maybe even more top 1% of of words, you know, captures something like. 99% um, of data. Um, whereas with heavy tail, it, it may be that the, the, um, the top 10% of words um, captures um, something like 70% of data. Right, so if I took the top 10% of all words, maybe I only captured 70%. So 10% is a lot of the words. This is probably your speaking vocabulary, right? But if you go to a different place, someone else is going to be has these other big words that they like to use all the time, right? That that isn't what what you typically use. And so this is a part of the, the vocabulary. So 70% of all the words which are used, or 30% of the words, are not in the top 10 most likely. Right, so, so these, these, this, this data here, you need to worry about the tail. If it's an exponential tail, you can usually chop off at a certain point and basically ignore things after that, and you're not really going to lose anything. But if you're, if you have a heavy tail, you can't ignore the tail. Thirty percent of your data is in the tail. Okay, so, so, so what's another kind of real-world example? So, if you, if you look at the sale of books, right? So, um, so you could probably say the, um, the top um, 100,000 books, or 10,000 books, these are going to be in like a bookstore. You could go down to a Barnes & Noble, and you can buy up to the top 10,000 most sold books. Maybe this is only 5,000 or something, I don't know. Right? But, but this isn't how books are generally sold anymore. You could say the top um, t 10 million books, you know, um, you could go in and buy these on Amazon, right? I'm guessing these numbers, right? But there are a lot of books on Amazon. Maybe it's only one million, 
right? Maybe there's only one million books you can buy on Amazon. They have them in a warehouse. Um, and people buy these books, right? But then, you know, there really are, you know, like 100 million books. 100 million books out there. A lot of, like, if, if you look at my PhD thesis, right, this counts as a book. Probably no one has ever, ever actually bought my thesis. Probably because it's online, but that's not the only reason I don't have really bought it. But, so, but if you wanted to, there's a company out there, when I, when I sent in my thesis, they said, there's a company out there that bought the rights to it. Um, and I think I actually had to pay them. But, uh, <laughs> this is true for almost everyone, but OK. Uh, so, but you can tell the company, I want to buy um, I want to buy just thesis. I want a copy of it. They will print it for you and send it to you in the mail. So you can then um, print. Um, you can print on demand, right? So now there are even on Amazon they have a lot of obscure books that you can print on demand and get sent to you. I don't know if it includes my thesis, but it includes some other weird, weird stuff, in it, right? So so you can now get. 10, 10 million of the books. And there's a market for these books. And it's because of the heavy tail. Why did Amazon destroy all these bookstores? Because this 10,000 books maybe only captured something like 50% of all the books people wanted to buy. But they couldn't stock anymore. It wouldn't, they wouldn't fit in their store. They, they, it wasn't conventional to cater to every individual person. There are only so many people in a neighborhood that would go to that bookstore, and many of the obscure books you don't know if they want it or not. But Amazon can have this one warehouse, and they can have they can carry five of these obscure books, or maybe do a printing of 100 of them and have them in stock. And there are enough people that will buy them. And this is such a better experience that it killed all these bookstores because of this heavy tail. And this print on demand even goes further into the heavy tail. Right, so, so, so th this is, an, when you get to really large data sets, you have to, sometimes worry about this heavy tail phenomenon. Um, another place where this you can kind of see this is if you analyze some customer data with all these high dimensional attributes and so forth. You can, you can look at it, you can do PCA, do the SVD of the, of, of the data, look at the, at the um, 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 you can look at the singular values, right? And if, if you look at the singular values, if these have an exponential tail, that means there's some spot you can chop them off and say, I only care about the subspace of the first k dimensions here, the first k singular values. But if the data has a heavy tail, then you'll lose 30% of your data if you chop off at the spot. You could lose 30% of your data even if you include the top 10% of the subspaces. So when you have heavy tail data, it really kind of gets in the way of a lot of these techniques. And you can't kind of say these points pass to your outliers and these points are not. You can't throw them away. You need to use something which is going to work even though you have um, even though you have all these 30% of your data as outliers. Um, okay, uh, looks like I've gone over the limit. So uh, so I, I got to the first two. Um, this last one we mentioned Earlier, I was going to talk about these robust um, statistics. Uh, these are like the median instead of the mean. And these are things that you can provably be robust up to something like 50% of your data is out. So even for these heavy tail distributions, they still should be able to find your structure, um, which then you can filter out and analyze if you want to, or, or, or not. You already have the structure. Okay, so we're starting, on Wednesday, we're starting to talk about graphs. And we're going to start with Markov chains, which is really the fundamental of the, all the theory and the concepts behind really understanding how to think about graphs. So we're not really going to talk about large-scale graph mining yet, but we'll talk about some of the foundations of that on this one.